So these things that I loved so much, I put in the middle of my life. Hello, everybody. It's Christine Marie Mason, your host for the Rose Woman Pod. Today, my guest is Suka Das. He is a traveler from Berlin who is working all over the world helping people find their freedom. So we start by talking about that subject. What is freedom anyway? Hello, Christine. Thank you for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. I think my experience, freedom is like this state of consciousness where I am really happy, light, feel lightly. And there is this kind of bliss what is really spreading his joy of life. And it's deeper than everything else, my thoughts, my feelings, that is for me freedom. Uh, so this sort of deeply settled joy, yeah. in a way. And somehow that seems to me to be coupled with the ability to respond to the moment, like not to be responding from old stories, like I'm actually in freedom of choice and how I choose my reaction in the world. So that's both inside of the self and then in the outside world, right? But you've been on this path. I mean, I'd love to hear a little bit about your personal story. And it sounds to me like you got drawn into spiritual work and personal development work early. How did you get started? It begins when I was 17. And yeah, as many teenagers in my friend circle group, we took unconsciously drugs. And my parents were alcoholics. So addiction was a big story of mine when I grew up. And there was this one weekend I took too much and I felt in a really deep hole. And it was really one of my deepest holes I ever been in my life. And I recognized that I don't know who I am mm. or who am I. <laughs> then at this time, in this situation, it came, my whole life was a lie. I couldn't find words to speak with my nearest friends. And it felt like I was living a mask and I want to be a strong man or whatever. But I had no idea what is behind this mask. What, what is exactly the consciousness or mm. the, what is behind that surface. So I started to change my friends because they were using drugs. And I started to practice psychedelic sessions in a conscious set and setting environment. So during this time, I had an experience of an ego death, the transcendence of all worlds, is one and with this consciousness I, I went back to my daily life and I said to myself okay I got this experience but I want to get there without substances so I started to meditate when I was 18 and five years later I met an Advaita Vedanta guru and I was 15 years with him and while that I became a father when I was 24 at one point, I had this deep spiritual practice, but on the other hand, I try to find my way in the daily business life, you know, like working, getting money, um, spending time in trainings. Yeah, that is often the place where people get stuck, right? Integrating the transcendent meditative spiritual experience or the transcendence into parenting or working. So here you were, you were working and raising your son. And slowly after a process, 10 years or something, I got a burnout mm. and with depression faces. And it was really hard for me at one hand to feel I'm not productive for society and the corporate I was working for and taking time for myself. I was six, six weeks in a clinic and I realized that was 
a time I, I couldn't remember when I have only six weeks for myself, you know, and that changed a lot in my perspective. Just for those of you who aren't in socialized medicine systems, uh, if you get a burnout in America, no, you don't get to go away for six weeks, but can we just take a little time out and talk about what Germany does if you have a burnout? You get to go to like a Luftkurort or a Badekurort or something like that, right? You get to go to take a cure. Is that covered by your socialized medicine plan? Yes. Talk, just say what that means to take a burnout cure. Yeah, first of all, you get a um, psychotherapist um, the first date to meet up and speak about what is exactly uh, your issue. Then if the psychotherapist has the same opinion that is really strong, the burnout, he can recommend a place in a clinic, psychotherapist clinic, that you have for, um, for the first time you got four weeks and then you can always like two weeks more, two weeks more. And it depends on which insurance you have. There are more options and, and mine was after six weeks enough. I couldn't get more, but it felt like this was just the beginning. Yeah, two less. I feel that these deep periods of rest and reevaluation come few and far between like a life sabbatical isn't uh, common in the West. And, and oftentimes you feel that you should just be able to push through everything and keep going and keep going. But to just begin to settle down and get quiet and, and rest often reveals the depth of how much you've been missing that rest and work. So you did this six weeks and then what happened? I came to a conclusion that I have to change my way of life in a you mean 180 degrees mm. so i stopped working from the company i had the, my whole life i i started uh, central massage when i was 20 21 and i always thought about to show it to others i started to lead meditations with uh, when i was 21 so this these things that I loved so much, I put in the middle of my life, you know. Mm. So I created a business out of it where I can stay with people that I like and I want to, uh, and I really consciously choose my um, business partners to host retreats. And on the other hand, there was also this gap, uh, this energy gap and still a little bit depression faces so I was such in a deep hole that I was laying in my bed daily scrolling on Instagram and there was a friend of mine she was posting like if you need more energy more focus try this breath work I said okay what I have to lose you know so I tried this breathing technique and it was like in the face to build up my new business but I was still confronted with less energy, you know, motivation, lacks. So after 15 minutes of this breathing technique, I felt alive again. And before that experience, I thought maybe I crossed a border and I couldn't get back to my happiness, to my strength, to my power. And this 15 minutes of breath, breath work, it was like, gave me hope, you know. And I started a research, what is it, <laughs> about it. And then it was the Wim Hof method. Mm -hmm. So I started uh, to look around what kind of YouTube videos. And then there was the cold blanche included in this method. And I was like, hell, oh my God. I love to be in India when it is winter in Europe, you know. But I decided, okay, give it a chance. So I pulled the cold water on in my bath tube, went in for two minutes and I went out and I was screaming of joy and happiness and power energy. It was really, yes, wow. And my son was running <laughs> to the bathroom and I said, daddy, is everything okay? And I said, yes, I felt so, I, I feel so good such a long time ago. Um, it was really, life-changing so I decided also to put this in my business to 
to show it to others. Well, this idea that you put what you love at the center of your life, I just want to stay there for a minute. Because what do you, so many people do what they love as a sideline and they do what they hate 10 hours a day <laughs> or something like that. But you'd already been practicing meditation and sensual massage, which I'd love to hear the definition of that, by the way. What do you think it took you so long to decide to move that into be your work? What, what do you think stops people from doing the things that they love a priori? In my case, it was maybe a missing of self-love or self-responsibility, why I'm here. And also this trust yourself. Mm. Trust yourself who you are, um, this unique being who has a message or who has experience and can help other beings. So still now, sometimes after a retreat, I'm talking to myself like, is that reality? <laughs> you know, people are thankful to spending time with me and I'm still in a process to, to learn to thanks myself that I was able to take that step in my life. That's so sweet. I got this little, there's a Sally Field meme when she accepts the Academy Award and she goes, you really like me or something like that. <laughs> She's like, you know, one of the top actresses and saying something like that. That's very sweet. That's very vulnerable. So can we go, can we just back up a step and talk about the central massage component and what that was and sort of what drew you into that? Because that's something you're still offering. You just offered that here at the Hawaii Tantra Fest and um, I got to taste it with uh, in the group. A uh, very impactful feeling of being deeply seen, very safe container, uh, learning how to be in reverence towards another body. Uh, that I really loved it. So can you describe what it's about for you? For me, it is a ritual of meditation, of self, experience the self, and also as the receiver. Mm. It is very rare in our intimate life that we have this clear frame. One is giving, one is receiving. Then there's the component of that our skin is the biggest organ of our body. So stimulating really, it's a whole body massage from the toe to the hair. Everything should be touched, say hello, and be seen as it is, and respect as it is. So there, there's a big component of elevate the self-love of the receiver, then as the giver, just that you have this inner set, like, just being in the moment and, and be with what is instead of I have an aim and goal, I want to get you an orgasm, you know. Mm. And most people are thinking also, um, if they think about a sensual massage, it is like all about sex. No, because first of all, you have to build up trust. Then you have to relax the body then there's a harmonizing happening in the body, in the energy centers. And in these three steps, there came, came up a lot of old feelings. And you have to stay with that, let it go, accept it like it is. It has nothing to do with the, with the moment of the massage. It is really, you go deep into the tissue. So let it go is one of the things. And then after that, then can up really like ecstasy and joy and an and, and orgasmic state. And also it is, every ritual is different and you have to build up from the beginning, build up trust with a welcome phase, then comes the relaxing phase, and then comes the front side and the back side, which can include an anal or a genital massage, but it hasn't have to be. So as a giver, you always have the responsibility to feel what is the best for the person who is receiving. And also 
um, in my teachings, it's very important that you are always stay in contact with the receiver, asking during different uh, phases like how are you, mm -hmm. how does it feel for you, mm -hmm. that the receiver is always have the feeling that he's or she's seen, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and respect it. Mm -hmm. When there's a boundary and that gets crossed or it's also like before you have to talk about where your boundaries and do you have a, a physical issue which I had to know or where there are also some other emotional issues which can came up, uh, which can come up. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a whole world and I was so thankful when I learned it because um, I integrated it in my sexual life and it gives a whole new value um, of getting no people better um, build up trust also the view of the sexuality without an aim and bring the joy only to the moment instead of uh, if you are in a long-term relationship you know each other so well I know how I can bring you to your orgasm and you you too so somehow this neuropath highways we get used to it but this is brings us back once one step back and really focus focusing on the area we are touching and there's more happening between the temperature of the hand is reacting on the hormones production of the other person so now they started in clinics um, psychotherapist clinics to integrate whole body massages because it helps with depression mm. Yeah, we've talked about that before, that touch releases oxytocin in women, which is an amazing release. I want to paint a picture for people of what it's like to do this session, the introductory session. And the first thing that we did was to breathe together, and then we touched each other's hearts. We said something nice, uh, and then we asked about boundaries, like you're saying, is there anything, any injuries I need to know about, anything you want to not have touched on your body? And with that context, uh, there's sort of a warm-up piece that you taught us around uh, kind of fluffing their energy, you know, basically bowing down to them, inhabiting a sense of reverence in yourself, uh, looking at them as like this, this precious jewel that you're going to be giving to and paying attention to, and then moving currents around their body and standing behind them and holding them gently. And all of this is, I think, what you were talking about in the welcome period. And then they lay down. So by the time that they lay down to receive, you've already entered into kind of a communion stage, it feels like. Yeah? Yeah. And, and then the other thing that I was surprised by and really liked was this progression inward from the head, the hands, the feet, so that you're basically touching the periphery of the body before you move into the central parts or the more sensitive parts. And you called it, get to know the hand. Get to, you, you know, ref referring to it this like very sweet, like you're kind of dating the hand before you start squeezing it, you know, touching mm. it lightly. And then you can get in there and squeeze it, <laughs> you know. So I love that part. Mm. What happens in the sensual and sexual massage piece seems very risque unless you're with someone you know, but you do this with groups of people who are strangers or yeah. who are in trainings. What's, what's that like and, and what issues come up? So first of all, the training is over more days. So we build up trust in the group. Um, they get to know each other. So when the intimate massage parts is on the schedule, they are already really known with each other. So even the people who can't imagine to do that with other strangers uh, in this kind of trainings, nobody skipped it in my uh, trainings ever. <laughs> they say, it felt after the first weekend, they are part of my family, you know. So first of all, I, started, uh, I start with the anal massage. You have to practice it first on your own that you know how it feels for another person, you know. And this kind of 
erogenous zones, this tissue is so so sensitive that all our traumatas is is saved there, is there saving in saving, and you have to relax it first that it can come to pleasure. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. You're, you're saying that trauma is stored in the anal area, and so it's it's stored up there, and you have to sort of unlock that before you can get to the pleasure part. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And also in with the intimate um, massage. So first focus on the relaxation of this whole area and then it can come to a um, pleasure uh, happening but also sometimes it's really good when there comes a lot up stop let it be and start one week after a next session yeah never you know? force exactly and less is more always in this sensual areas less is more mm. you you went on um, that that piece is really rich and so you're you're getting more comfortable with your own body you're doing kind of an embodied meditation uh, and that's in your toolkit a and then you mentioned the Wim Hof method like I feel a lot of people might have seen the documentary where he's like jumping in an ice icy river in Amsterdam or something yeah. and apparently Wim started to do this after he lost his wife, like in a period of great depression. And he's kind of engineering his own neurochemical uh, bath. Can you describe what the breathing is like and, and when the ice plunge component is helpful and why that's used and, and sort of how that might be applied in daily, how you apply it in daily life? First of all, I can tell you about the benefits. If you have issues with depression or autoimmune disease, so many people, thousands of people get with this only with breathing and cold exposure and working with your mindset, a better life out of it, you know. So the Wim Hof method produces a lot of adrenaline, more than uh, your first bungee jump, you know. Wow. And this is connected to the immune system. So, so it helps people to harmonize their uh, immune system and also if you do the breathing in the ice plunge um, you produce happy hormones such as noradrenaline serotonin and dopamine mm. so if you have depression it's really helpful and for me in one two weeks i got such a big step in my mm. yeah in my mood it was amazing and I and I tried it if I did the breathing te technique not first in the morning it was a bad day you know so uh, I better do that <laughs> so you do the breathing technique and the ice every day mostly mostly and in the beginning the first two years it was really constantly and uh, now I'm traveling I'm happy in my life so if I have the time I like it always to have um, first of all before I move out out of the bed doing a breathwork session and then doing my exercises and after that I hopefully I can get an ice bath where I am when you breathe or when you practice the breathing technique it simulates a low oxygen environment in the body increasing the production of EPO which is known as the cyclist doping drug which stimulates the creation of new red blood cells. So it's, it's supporting on a cell level and hormone level, the immune system. So, and also if you have chronic pain issues, uh, it helps a lot because if you breathe, you change your pH level. Uh, so it gets more alkaline and this is connected to the temperature and pain receptors in our body, in our skin. And it's like a three parts protein mm -hmm. and it splits up if the pH level rises. Mm -hmm. So it could be also in the other, if you drink too much coffee or what else, you feel more cold than natural and uh, a pain feels more painful than it is. So with the breathing technique, 
you go in the other direction that you feel less pain. So if you have uh, yeah, some kind of issues, it can be really helpful. So what is the, is it one breathing technique or are there multiple? Can you? There are more techniques. There's one, the fundamentals breathing technique. Then uh, this is also like if you're starting this whole new field of breath work, it is wise to start with a not so intense breath work. So I love all of this and it feels also very accessible. Other than going to one of your 10 day trainings, it's free. You know, like you go to you go to the training and you learn how to do it, and then you basically have your own uh, medicine chest in your body. That's one of the things I, I really like about this technique: is uh, no more pharmaceuticals. You're not on the hedonic treadmill. You don't have to keep going to classes. When once you begin, you do this techniques and you do the ice bath and you can do it intensively. And then once you're in more of a stable situation, you can back off and do it a couple of times a week, and you're fine. Or what's the ultimate? plan yeah it depends always what you want or what is your life situation um, if you can practice it daily perfect but if you have a really cold ice plunge once a week it is still support you less i don't suggest you can do it every day but at least once a week is recommended and what's the temperature so every temperature under 60 degrees Fahrenheit is useful because the temperature has a distance um, to the body temperature uh, from the outside that you get all the reactions in the body, which are helpful, the positive. There's a thing called the polar plunge in Chicago where people jump into a frozen lake, see how long you can stay. How long do I have to stay in this ice bath for it to work? So first of all, if you have no professional guidance, start slowly, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. And with two minutes, you're really fine. And there's also like between two minutes and 10 minutes, but 10 is really for advanced people. Two minutes every day or once a week is really good with a really cold water. All right, I'm going to do it. Um, does it help with weight loss? Of course. I think you lose around 600 calories per plunge. What? Wait a minute. <laughs> That's like more than a spin class. Exactly. All right, I'm getting in the ice plunge. Okay, so we've covered a lot already. We've covered you know, who you are, what's behind the mask, ego, death, and transcendence, integration of, ex of peak experiences, burnout, socialized medicine and why it's so much better, sensual massage, breath work, ice plunging, and kind of going back to the beginning of, you know, what is freedom? What is personal development? I would love to hear a little bit more broadly again, like, why do you think people need this stuff anyway? Aren't we just naturally supposed to be happy? Like, What happens to us that we fall into these holes and uh, that needs such correction. I think the environment plays a big role in this whole game. Mm. When I see us human beings living in a cave with your tribe together, I think nobody was depressed at all. So when I look back to my life, I was separating myself from my friends because of work. I was doing not even the time or just let me say it in a different thing i was working more and more but the things that i really would help me to have a happy life like sports going into the gym meeting friends being in nature wasn't how you were spending your time yeah it was just also being surrounded by people they work a lot like 12 sometimes 16 hours a day and so, yeah, I feel like our, our society is like a mirror or influences our health, mental health, and so on. Yeah. Well, that social structure, I think, is really a deep part of it. Absolutely. And then we've been doing it for generations. And so you grow up with this uh, absence of touch and absence of connection and knowing who you are. 
So I feel like what we're doing here in Hawaii is a little bit of an experiment to see how do people feel when they go back to living in tribe, you know? Um, so that's good to hear. So sh- a short cut to changing all of society mm-hmm. <laughs> is doing some of these practices and finding community that wants to do it with you. So in Berlin, you have practice groups and classes that are just people who are committed to doing the work. You, you, you actually created a friend circle who wants to practice. Can you talk about that? As I said, I changed a lot in my life after 2016, um, after the burnout and when I was in a clinic, I was searching for people with the same values. And this felt like the best medicine. And I stopped alcohol drinking, Uh (laughs) uh, drinking alcohol. So it was amazing what happened if the right people are coming together. We created our own weekends, retreats together. Everybody was teaching mm. things uh, and, and support each other. So yeah, amazing, really. Mm. That's a new model too, that everybody has something to teach, these more cooperative collectives. So I sure loved your teaching. Mm. Is there anything else you'd like to cover? Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the new science about the psychedelic, what is really now coming into our German medicine therapeutic world, Mm. which I really like because this was like anchoring a spiritual compass in my life. And now it comes on such a... um, grounded level back so yeah I I just want to say that I love this openness from the science and the clinical health branch to to point it on that spot yeah which was forbidden over years yes still and most of the world still forbidden so what now we're getting these sanctioned avenues Uh, There's been a lot of research. I think we've covered psilocybin therapy before. Um, I think I have an episode coming up on ketamine therapy. Uh, But they they all have different ways of bypassing uh, the conscious, structured uh, knowing of the ego Mm. and letting us get at deeper truths. So you're doing some of those one-on-one sessions. And and I think uh, if you're a U.S. or domestic listener, I think we have listeners in 150 countries. Mm. So if you're in the United States, Oregon, parts of California have decriminalized all of these things. And if you go in through a uh, medical environment, you can uh, get one-on-one therapy or even group therapy uh, in, in more of these modalities. Iboga, Ibogaine is another mm. really helpful with addiction. So we're all about the freedom here. And the... The integration work, I also work, I, I, I'm hosting little, small retreats and, and one-to-one sessions, but also like um, the integration is, is the most big thing that you get the best out of it, you know. It's like I have, I met people, they went to South America, did an ayahuasca retreat, came back and were completely lost about their integration work because they can't speak with anybody about it nobody in their environment can understand what they experienced and i'm also working a lot with people to integrate their experience integration was the word of the year for me last year i sort of sometimes have a theme word and one of the things i've noticed in a lot of communities where there's peak experience is people get addicted to the peak experience mm. and that creates catharsis but not actually deep healing a deep return to oneself so by having peak experience and then saying how do i weave those insights into my daily life and keeping them current make even turning them into like notes that you can pin on your mirror and say remember this insight today that you had and how that will flow through your day so that you don't get caught up in the old trap. And so I'm wary of what I would call the hedonic treadmill mm. around psychedelics like or, or even ecstatic anything, really, mm. that I get addicted to the high, but I don't have the stable. What you talked about in the beginning, 
the idea that I could have this experience and remember that inner joy and freedom without the aid of all these external crutches mm-hmm. is the goal, that I can walk around in that inner glow. Mm-hmm. So uh, whatever you're doing out there, uh, whether it's uh, lots more exercise, more community, more touch, uh, or whether you're ready to go to intentional giving and receiving through sensual massage or intentional breathing to change your chemistry or dropping yourself into into an ice bath um, or going to the point of using natural mind-altering substances to change your state and getting some therapy around that. Integration is important in all of them. Exactly. And really what integration is is awareness, hmm. right? Bringing awareness to it. Well, I adore you. I feel like you were one of the great gifts of the time with uh, our Advaita friend. And I look forward to doing more work and sessions with you in the future. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. And I'm looking also <laughs> forward for our things that we create together. Yeah, the pleasure tour. Exactly, the pleasure <laughs> tour. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You know me. You can find me on Instagram at the.rose.woman. You can find my company, rosewoman.com, where we make all kinds of intimate and sexual and body care products. And all of my books are there and candles and lifestyle things. And that's how I can afford to do this show. So go find some juicy products. And if you like this episode and you found something useful in it, please send it to a friend by text. Just pause and send it off to them right now. All right. Peace, blessings, may you be living in freedom and joy today and always.